All right. So to start with here, you're going to go and not do an English drawing. You're going to do a metric drawing. So you're going to go metric, and you're going to do a standard millimeter IAM, standard millimeter assembly. Okay, so once you have that, you're going to go up to your place. And you're going to go to your folder where you just copied to your network drive. So remember, that's on your M drive, activity folder. And you're going to go to your ACT Robotics folder, whichever one it is, whether it's your base one or the other. You're going to go to your Brackets folder. And there you may have a bunch of brackets listed or you may have a very few brackets. Um, if you have a bunch of brackets listed, you're going to go down to the... Oh, I lied, not brackets. Go up one. Go Channel. <laughs> Sorry, Channel. There you have a bunch listed, or not, but you're going to go to the 13.5 inch channel. And you're going to place four of those in your drawing. So now, the way that it first places these in here um, is not the orientation we want these in. We don't want our channel standing up. We're going to make the base of a robot, the frame of it. So the first thing I do is, I click on my cube up here, and I go to, I'm looking straight on the the channels here then I rotate my channel so they're vertical or sorry so they're horizontal not vertical and then I click on the corner of my cube so the top right corner of my cube click on it and now those are in there in a relatively normal orientation now the only thing with this is <clears throat> they're actually facing the opposite way of what I'd like them to so I'm going to rotate my cube around. I'm going to come up here to my cube once, click on that corner. It rotates at 90 degrees. Click once more. Now I have these channels facing in there just the way I want them to to build my actual robot frame. Um, I'll show you some examples of the frame here in just a moment. But your frame, we want all the U part of your channel facing out for the frame. So what we're going to do here is this view, I'm going to make it the current view. So I'm going to come up to my cube. I'm going to right click on my cube, set current view as home, fixed distance. And then now notice this side, if I hover over it, that's called the top. I'm going to click on that. That's no longer going to be my top. That's going to be the front. So I'm going to zoom in there a little bit. I'm going to set that view as my front. So I right click on my cube, set current view as front. So now when I hit my F6, I go back there right to that view. My cube is orientated the right way. It says front, top, and right side there. And that's looking beautiful. All right, so now we have to ground this first bar. So this bar here, we're going to right-click on it and ground it into place. So that first bar is grounded. Now we're going to start putting together the rest of our frame. This 13.5-inch wide bar is going to be the width of my robot in the front. So what I'm going to do with this channel is I'm going to place it right and made it to this channel here and let me just kind of do this on one of these so i'm going to take this one i'm going to go here to this end of this bar i'm going to go to that flat surface right there highlighted that whole surface i'm going to zoom out here a little bit and rotate around and i'm going to place it over here on my grounded bar right here on this end of it and i'm going to apply that so now i'm going to hit f6 to see where i'm at all right so notice i've got that bar placed right there next I want to constrain the top surface of it and make it flush to my other bar. So I have this bar constrained here. I want to leave it so it slides back and forth. We're going to get that locked into place here in a little bit with some brackets. But I have that bar right there in place on that one perfectly. Like I say, it will slide back and forth still, but that's fine. The channel of it, the U portion of it, is facing out just as it is on the front. So to do the rest of these, what I want you to do is I want you to place this channel right in place where it would be this end of it placed right here and made it to this surface on that side, just on the other end. And then this channel will flip around 180 degrees and be placed back here on the back. Again, the U facing out all the way around. Um, let me actually, I could pull up this other drawing here that I just finished last hour, and that would show you exactly how this was done. All right, for our next little step, um, you should have all these say placed in here. I did not place that last one yet. But now what you do need to do is we need to place our next part. So go up here to place. <clears throat> this time you're going to go up and you are going to go to the brackets folder. 
So in the brackets folder, go down until you get to the 90 degree um, angle bracket. It looks like this by the little preview. 90 degree angle bracket. So select it. And you're actually going to end up needing um, six of those. So place six of those in there. Um, there. Okay. The way that these things are put into place. <clears throat> just as you saw in that little example I just showed you and held up to you. Um, the brackets are going to go right here on the inside of this um, corner. It's going to go right here in this position. So the way you're going to do that, you're going to go constraint. This flat part of the 90 degree bracket, you're going to pick on that flat side of it where you see the bolt holes there. And you're going to click down here on this surface. We're just going to mate it to right there. And then apply that. Now, this bottom side of it that I can't see, that I can't select, I want to mate that to this side that's here. So I want to rotate this around a little bit. It gets kind of confusing sometimes when you rotate this around. you got to kind of be able to visualize a little bit. All right, so there's my bracket there. I'm kind of looking at it from underneath. I got to take that surface of it, that flat side where the bolt holes are, and I'm going to mate it right to there and apply that. Now I'm going to hit my F6 and pull this around so I can see what I got. So here's my bracket. Bracket slides up and down still. Uh, this still slides side to side. Now what I need to do is I need to line this up to where it's approximately in place. doesn't have to be perfect, but you can't have it lined up like this. So you want this beam to be slid in here where it's approximately into place. And then what I like to do is I like to lift this one above the surface just a little bit so I can see that hole really easily. And I'm going to constrain the center of that hole to the center of the hole here that it lines up with, which is a little bit tough. It's going to be that hole right there. Now, they have switched Inventor a little bit. Um, just this year, this version's different. I found this out this year when I started working with it. Sometimes if your um, arrows are pointing the wrong way when you're going center of hole to center of the hole, you may need to pick on this other option, which is aligned or opposed. So you might have to switch back and forth. So if you click center line, center line, it doesn't work. Pick on this second option that says opposed. Um, there my opposed now won't work, but the aligned does. So apply that. When you hit your F6, you'll see that bracket's there nicely. If you try to click on it and move it, the little circle with the slashes there saying it's locked into place. That one's locked into place. It won't move. All right. So now with that, go ahead and place one of these brackets in the same position in all four of these corners. So one right here on the top surface there, one back here, and one over here. I'm going to go ahead and finish mine up here. Um, all right. So now we're going to make our corner joints a little bit stronger. So for each one of the corner joints, you need to have... Um, two brackets is what kind of my, my guideline I'm going to give you. So I'm going to show you one way of doing that here with uh, some more corner brackets. And so we're just going to put those in place. So what we're going to do is we're going to place this corner bracket right down here on the bottom aligned with these holes. So there's a bracket at the top and the bottom at this corner. So to do that, we're going to go constrain that flat spot there to there. Rotate this up and above. So there to there. Then, as always, I slide that down just a little bit so I can get to these a little bit easier. And that hole lined up with that hole. So there we go. That's beautiful. If I rotate this around, you'll see what I've got. There, that corner's there. And we're doing this in the front of the robot. So this corner here and this corner here place the two brackets, one at the top and one at the bottom. All right, carry on and do that. Okay, so now on the front, you did those two angle brackets to stiffen those joints up. On the back, I want you to use an angle bracket and a flat plate. So to do that, you're going to go place. It's in the same brackets folder. It's just called a 3 by 1.5 plate. You're going to select it, and you're going to place in two plates. The plate, this is it's taking care of the top surface, hooking it together or fastening it together. Now you're going to put this on the bottom surface. So I'm going to go constrain, take my plate and mate that surface of it to this bottom side down whoa i just how long i turned my robot around there we go to the bottom side over here there we go and mate that there then i'll get that approximately lined up in the place about to there and i'll constrain hole to hole and those of you that are doing yours out there still constrain hole to hole so i'm going to constrain that hole to that hole 
apply it. Notice when you do that, your plate will rotate on that axis. Again, I put it approximately in a place. I like to keep it off just a little bit, so it's easier to tell when I line those up. So now I'm going to constrain that hole to that hole. Again, notice it won't line up there until I pick my um, aligned option. And right there, that's beautiful. So there's that plate is in place nicely on that bottom surface. So again, I'm going to place my other plate <clears throat> over on this side. Slide it around to where it approximately lines up. Get my bolt holes lined up. And one more bolt hole down here somewhere. Escape. And lag my computer out. And that plate should be attached nicely. Now on the bottom we have those two. On the top I have the other.